So I returned to Millionaire's Bunker, one of the weirdest places I've ever explored. So I had to go back for a second visit. Let's see if anything's changed since my first visit. And that's just weird. There's a big door in case the bombs dropped. You've got a protected place to live or well, outside the nuclear war happens. Although, ignore that little detail because it's not actually deep enough. It's not deep enough to survive an atomic bomb. But if we just skip over that detail, it's a place where you can hide if there was ever some nuclear attack outside. Let's go in, let's go in. This place is so weird and so interesting. Go in and got a tap up there, door there, a little cupboard there. So in and in we go to the main room. We've got a bit of water in those. It's disgusting. You couldn't possibly drink out of that. Well, I guess if all the water outside's contaminated, you'd have to drink that water in there. There's a few changes. I think the control panel is not quite as good condition as it was last time. I do like the old ceiling. That looks very old fashioned, very bunker like. So see all the different things. Power filter, main air filter, cycling system, dorm vent fans, cooker. Complete control panel for the bunker. And that panel there looks proper vintage. Speaker? What's the speaker for? Or is that to communicate with other people in their bunkers if ever something happens? Probably uh, some Amtavaja set in here somewhere. Ooh, what is that? I'm not sure that is. 12 volt supply, boost bass, boost treble, that must be a radio system. Yeah, this version of here, you can't leave because it's all nuclear attack outside, so you're just in here talking to your other millionaire friends with their own bunker. Got this air filtration system here. Look at that for a good filtration system. Wow, little hand wind overrides in case electricity went. You've got bedding, do we have original? Let's go through here. And before we look, have another look at what delicious food there is to eat in here, let's first go this way into the kitchen. And this is the kitchen you really, <laughs> oh my, this is much cook down here. I mean, after nuclear attacks happened, got an old cooker, a nice old cooker, look at that, actually that's barely been used, and it's been used a bit, but not as much as I thought. So this was all just stuff on standby, for a cooker, but oh, look how clean that is. For a cooker, that's like from the 70s or 80s. A sink there, some old brands here, Lemon Plus Foam, that's not a brand I've heard. Floor cleaner. Oh wow, look at the sink. Oh, got dried milk, got some food substance there. Already with bits of mould on it. Focus camera. And over here we have disinfectant. Oh wow, why is this so weird? Look at all of that disinfectant and pine disinfectant. Oh wow, oh wow, buckets of very old water that's been here for a very long time. Oh, we need our table salt. Got lots of table salt there. Plate there, plug up there. Ooh, bit of machinery up there, didn't spot last time. The air filtration system. Then from the kitchen, we can now enter into the ladies' toilet on this side. And in here we have a wash basin. So that's where you'd get washed. Does that wash the toilet? I'm not sure. I think the toilet's in a separate room. And down here we have got dairy hypochloride. Air freshener. Oh, lots and lots. <laughs> Look at that, look at that there dear, it's stalked up fully here. Oh, lots of TCP, yet yeah, we need to have plenty of TCP in the bunker. How long did they stock it for? Do they, not a year, maybe four months maybe worth of stock? They proper stocked it up. I wonder if ever there was a nuclear attack, how long you'd actually need to be in the bunker for before it'd be safe to go out, I wonder. And here we have the toilet. Oh my, look at that disgusting toilet. Wow. So that's not even connected up to a supplier, I don't think. I think I say toilet wet, because in the bottom so you empty it manually. Down here we have a toilet cleaner, I'm guessing, of some sorts. Well, 
Addis sponge, although that doesn't look that old, so I'm not sure about that one. No, maybe it's quite a few of them, maybe it is old. I don't know, that's weird. Then if we go in here, we can go into the first of the two bedrooms, where there is quite a few beds for people to sleep. Got eight beds. It actually doesn't look that different to that bell size bunker, the structure of that bed. Got bedding in there already. It's everything was ready, it is fully stocked, ready. In case it was ever needed, a little bedding there, bedding in there. Wow. Oh, and the air conditioning has been powered again. How weird is this? You've got here our heater. Well, you've got that heater there, then you've got a little one above it to keep you warm. Although, if I said, I'd say it'd be quite warm here because when you're underground, generally temperatures are fairly well regulated. You don't get hots and colds like you do when you're above ground. So let's now head this way out of this room. Let's try the other bedroom, which is located on the other side. So we go through here, back to the main control room in there. Up here we have our little additional storeroom. We'll look at the food last, because that is the ultimate bit to see. But we'll save that as a surprise for the end. And then this side is the men's washroom in here. Got a wash basin there, a little bit there, some, not sure what that is. And here we have the generator. Oh, look at it now, big, big generator. Hand crank to start it, just to get your electricity going. Oh yes, that's what every bunker needs, is the generator. Wow, this is a good, proper old generator. I can't believe it's all ready to come. That's the amount of money that I spent on this. This person spent a fortune on this bunker. So, so weird. So interesting as well. If we go through here, let's take a look in the other dorm. No more beds in this one. Oh no, same number of beds. We've got eight beds. Again, we've got the heating system. More dairy hypochlorite. Lots of bottles of this, are they full? Oh yeah, those all full. Yep, it really is your fully stocked bunker. I think I've got to have a sleep on one of the beds. I think that's just something when you find a completely untouched bunker, you just can't do it without having a sleep on a bed. Let's sleep here on the lower bed. Oh yes. Oh yes. Nuclear attacks happened to hide out in this bunker for a year. Wow, just the notion that I bet all the people would have fallen out, being all trapped together in such a small space, and there'd be lots of arguments and stresses, having everyone really jam-packed in here. You would be proper trapped in here, you wouldn't be able to leave if nukes did drop. I guess this would protect you if a nuclear bomb dropped a long way off. So let's say a nuclear bomb dropped in London, probably obliterate the whole of London and how big the atomic bomb is. But over here, it wouldn't have obliterated here over in Tunbridge Wells, but it probably would have made the air gone very radioactive. So this bunker, I guess, was to deal with the radioactive air outside and protect people inside from the overall radiation from a nuclear blast, but it wouldn't protect from the blast itself because it's not deep enough. Okay, let's now get up from this bed. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> This is really is weird. We should do an overnight challenge here. Actually, that'd be very interesting to have that challenge, although the air in here is a bit too stale. Oh, look, all this medication in there. Look at that. I wasn't expecting. Wow. Hmm. Savlon. Wow, that's an old bottle of Savlon. Oh, bandages. Yep, just in case anyone comes into an accident in here. Potassium chloride. Dressings, yeah, they've got, you've got everything here. Everything you could need for any event of anything going wrong. So you go out here, we've got, oh, spare parts for a pump. <coughs> Genuine parts. There, water pump grease. Yeah, in here is actually quite bad. But, uh, well, so I wouldn't stay in here too long, even though I do want to do an overnight challenge in here. Shall we now look at the best bit of the bunker? The most exciting, the gold mine, the absolute gold mine treasure of the bunker. This food, oh my, it is bad. It is really, really bad. And this is the best bit. So all these food supplies, been here since the 80s or possibly 70s. Sugar, 
five pints dried milk and here's some contents of the food complete with mold look at that mold so let's look at what these food products are bigger processed peas product you don't really get anymore processed peas these peas were like really cheap nasty peas they weren't even green they had to put green coloring in to get them back to being green again so this was like your cheapest processed food and from the 70s 80s to modern day this is what happens look at the mold that mold oh my look at that that is really bad and the one next to it some of these are so bad oh my oh this doesn't get old this does not get old that is so so oh oh it makes me feel sick looking at that the prey bentos processed food or oh, there it is would you like some delicious steak and kidney pudding? Well, not when it's been that old, because we look at the contents. Oh my, the mould is so bad. <laughs> this is just brilliant. The stuff you get here, this is the best bit of all. Got more processed peas, more braised steak. Got more fast pints, instant spray dried skimmed milk with vegetable fat. Oh, oh we got here some, I didn't spoil these last time, some quick dinners. Look at that. Cook in the pot. Oh, that's an old brand. Beef. Ew, ew. Weird. Ugh. Wow, stuff. Here you go. Here. Uh, coffee, mate. This does make me feel quite ill. Shall I have a look at our lovely Frey Bentos braised steak? Uh, let's, there's no dates on any of these. That's a weird thing. And it's. In LB, it's one LB, this one doesn't even have grams on it. Someone both old measurements and new because it's got the old measurements and the grams. This one just an LB, so that is old. It's no date because back in those days, the concept of sell by dates, used by dates, this didn't exist. And now, the absolute best bit our dinner. Oh, yes, who is hungry? Are you hungry for some food? It's even got a spoon there. There's our unfinished plate of Frey Bentos. Oh, this is pork luncheon meat. Oh my, shall we have a look at some of this meat? Oh dear, that is bad. That is really, really bad. Oh, oh, oh. Got some alcohol there. That smell is of absolutely terrible. And so let's have a closer look at plum rose and the smell comes out. As soon as you start poking, the smell comes out. Oh, look at that. Oh, let's look at the colours of that. Let's get a big bit juicy. Oh, juicy. But that's only the, that's not the best one. The best one is the dinner. The dinner, you can't beat the dinner. <laughs> look at that. Oh. This will probably get out of a lot. Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh. Someone has trashed the car since last time. I don't know why people do that. Yeah, yeah, the screen was not smashed last time. Someone smashed it. I don't understand people. I don't understand why someone would want to smash up something in an urbex site. But... So, yeah, I was not like that last time. We didn't have all that glass over seat. Yeah, someone's wrecked this. I don't know. That's what people are like, I guess. Nowadays, you have a nice urbex site and someone comes along, smashes stuff up. And in here, all the changes happened in this one. And it appears to be, uh, I don't know if it was the owners of the site, but I think it's more likely who will come in. <laughs> in here. There has been stuff stolen, because there used to be two little tractory things here. They're gone. And, and it wasn't as trashed as this. Like, oh, that, look, it's not as good. It wasn't perfect when I first came, but since I came, that is not how it used to be. It used to be quite a bit nicer than this so again don't know if it was the owners that removed the two track little track tree things but i think it's more likely some stolen them that's a shame really because this site was really good but people have just come along and well had a free for all i guess <laughs> It's got water in it, we could go for a swim.
All of this bit is all concrete underneath us, then that little bit of wood, so it should be alright. Good, uh, door back. Confused because this bunker's not deep enough to survive a blast. No, so we're not even underground. No, this, the part we're in is fully above ground. Really good. Thank <laughs> you.